I was at work uh, when I heard about it at the uh, at my regular job in, uh, in Cincinnati, and my wife called me and she was crying and, and said the church was flat. Was the first word that we heard, and uh, uh, of course, you know, it, it's devastating to think about. You, your heart sinks, and then you just you begin to think about what the church is going to do, how we're going to rebuild, how we're going to do this and, and that, and then we find out it's not as bad as it was. And, and of course, again, more than the building, we have a lot of families in the church that live here in the area and we began trying to call them trying to get in touch with them any way we could to find out who was okay and who wasn't okay and you know all that stuff begins rushing through your mind all at once and then you begin thinking about the other people beyond our church family and and just for for so long you know we didn't have I didn't see any pictures of Moscow I didn't know how bad it was it was just word of mouth and, you know worried about all those people the fact that we were able to be here just reminds everybody of that, that we're not done, we're still going, and, and this, this storm, this tornado is not going to stop us. We're still going to be able to keep pressing on. And it's not about the building. The building is special, you know, 140 year old church, I, I agree it's special, but it's a building. It, it's about the people. That's what it's about. There's so much destruction, there's so many people that are hurt. But this is our opportunity as, as a church to reach out to those people and, and show them the love of God and, and do everything, everything that's in our power to help as many people as we can. I mean, we may not be able to help everybody, but anybody that we can help is somebody that's better off.